When it comes to screen mods, the Game Boy Advance has quite a few to choose from. It's no surprise that we'll be taking a look at yet another iteration. But this one brings several new features to the table, and one key feature that really makes this kit unique. As far as these mods have progressed over the years, it's hard to imagine how they can be improved. But it seems that there's always something that can be made better. So with that, let's take a look at Funny Playing's latest kit, the Laminated IPS 3.0. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we'll be taking a look at, yes, another IPS kit from Funny Playing for the original Game Boy Advance. This is the laminated 3.0 IPS kit, and what makes this particular screen mod special is the ease of installation, the presence of a new on-screen menu system, as well as what I think is a truly impressive feature a new frame blending mode that really improves how shadows are rendered on the display. Now, frame blending is something we've seen before on the analog pocket, and I'm glad it was finally able to migrate over to a kit that we can install ourselves. Of course, the other great thing about these kits are that they are laminated to a glass lens. This offers a few benefits, one of the main ones being that you won't have to worry about dust getting underneath the glass, which is great news because that's always been a huge pet peeve of mine. Additionally, the screen will come perfectly centered and aligned, making the installation process a whole lot easier and just gives consistently fantastic results. Anyway, we'll go over all the features of this kit a bit later in the video, but in order to install it, you will need to purchase a specially designed shell from Funny Playing that is specifically made to work with this laminated screen. I have this translucent purple one here, and the quality of these shells are actually quite good. I'll be pairing it with some yellow buttons, also from Funny Playing, but there is a huge assortment of color combinations to choose from, so you're sure to find one that fits your tastes. Now, another great thing about this kit is that it works with both 40 and 32 pin model GBAs and has both of those options built right into the single flex ribbon cable. So no matter which model GBA you have, this kit will work for it. To find out what model you have, you can either open the console up and look at the number near the LCD connector, or by looking underneath the battery cover at this number right here. If it starts with a 1, it's a 32-pin model. And if it starts with a 0, like mine does, then it's a 40-pin model. Now, to really finish this build off, I will also be installing this funny playing rechargeable lithium-ion battery, which has a USB-C port for recharging. And everything I'm using for this build can be purchased from Retro Game Repair Shop, and if you use the coupon code TITO at checkout, you can save 10% on your entire order. All right, without any further ado, let's get right into installing this new laminated IPS kit. All right, to start things off, I'm gonna place the donor console onto my boxy pixel build fixture and then disassemble the console to extract the motherboard. Now, if you look near the LCD ribbon connector, you'll see one of the indicators that I mentioned earlier regarding which type of model GBA you have. Here you can clearly see the 40, which denotes a 40 pin model. If you had a 32 pin model, you would see a 32 here. Now, go ahead and delatch the bales on the connector and remove the ribbon. With the motherboard out, go ahead and grab the new shell and notice the bevel around the LCD opening. This is what will help keep the new panel in place. It's really a nice design. Now, go ahead and grab the laminated IPS panel and remove the protective film. Place the panel into the shell as shown. Next, grab the flex ribbon and connect the IPS panel to it. While not entirely necessary, I used a piece of double-sided tape to secure the ribbon to the metal housing of the LCD. Now, 
Then go ahead and tin these pads and attach the included three wires to them. Now I later found out that this step is completely optional. You actually don't need to do any soldering at all and you can still get the full functionality from this mod using just the touch sensor. But I'll get into that in more detail later on in the video, so stay tuned. So again, just to reiterate, this soldering part is completely optional. Now, since I have a 40 pin model GBA, I'll be using this part of the ribbon to connect to the motherboard. If you had a 32 pin model, you'd use the other. So here I'm folding the 32 pin portion of the ribbon cable to keep it out of the way. Now, since this will cover the wires we just soldered, it's important to keep track of what each wire is for. You can mark them with a Sharpie or just remember where each one goes. Next, we'll begin soldering the wires to the motherboard. But first, we need to drop in our retaining bracket. This needs to go under this lip here on the top portion of the shell, and you'll need to feed the wires and ribbon through as shown. And this is what it should look like. Now we're going to start soldering. I'm going to first solder to the test point TP9, which is for the L trigger. Then TP2, which is for the select button. And lastly, TP8, which is for the R trigger. Next, we need to remove some plastic flashing from the shell. Just simply cut it off with some flush cutters. Then go ahead and drop in all the buttons, membranes, and other various components. Before dropping in the motherboard, however, go ahead and connect the LCD ribbon to it. With the motherboard in, secure it with the three JIS screws. Next, we want to secure the touch sensor to the back of the glass screen lens as shown. I'm just using a couple pieces of Kapton tape to do this, and it probably would have been a lot easier to do this prior to installing the aligning bracket. Anyway, drop on the rear shell and button it all up. Now we also will be installing the funny playing battery pack. So first go ahead and remove these battery contacts. Then drop in the battery as shown, making sure that the wires aren't being pinched. Followed then by the battery board. Then connect the battery to the board, again making sure that the wire is not being pinched in any way. Now go ahead and grab the custom battery cover which has an opening for the USB-C port and snap it in place. And to really finish the build off, I'm placing these hollow foil labels to the back. Also, don't forget to apply the included battery heatsink to the board like I almost did. And there you have it, the funny playing laminated IPS 3.0 kit. So what I love about this kit is just how easy it is to install. And after playing around with it for a bit, I've come to realize that you don't even need to do any soldering. Everything can be controlled using the touch sensor. So with that, let's take a look at the features this new IPS kit has to offer. Now all the features on this kit can be accessed through the on-screen menu system or OSD. To get to the OSD, simply press and hold the select button. 
The first option is screen brightness. It has 15 levels and can be adjusted using the L and R triggers. To hop over to the next option, press the select button, which will then allow you to toggle the four available color presets. Option one is the default setting. Option two is called highlight mode, and it appears to be slightly brighter and perhaps more contrasty. But honestly, I couldn't really tell much of a difference between the two. Now option three is black and white, while option four is a green tint that I suppose is trying to mimic the original Game Boy palette. My guess is that options three and four are for when playing regular Game Boy games. Now the next setting is display mode. Option one is a default setting, while option two presents an anti-aliasing mode. This definitely appears to soften the image just a bit when compared to the default setting. And option three is pixel mode, and as you can see, it adds some horizontal scan lines, which actually look pretty nice. I don't usually like artificial scan lines, but I found myself keeping this setting on. And the last setting in the OSD is frame blending. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this is something that the analog pocket had, and it's a great feature because it helps to render shadows by getting rid of flicker. Here you can see I'm using the 240p test suite to showcase the analog pocket frame blending mode in action. When it's off, you'll notice that the shadow flickers. It's actually flickering a lot more rapidly in person, but due to the shutter speed of my camera, it appears as a slow flicker. Anyway, when frame blending is enabled, you can see that there is no flicker present at all, and it simply has that shadow effect. Now looking at the Funny Playing IPS 3.0 kit, we can see that the frame blending mode provides the same fix, which is fantastic. Frame blending is a setting that I will definitely be keeping on. Now, the last feature of the kit, which is actually really fantastic, is that you don't have to do any soldering at all. The OC menu can be very simply operated by using the single touch sensor behind the glass lens. To open the menu, just hold the touch sensor for about two seconds. When it's open, you can toggle the various settings by tapping the touch sensor. To advance to the next setting, just hold the touch sensor for about one second until it advances over. And then to turn the OSD off, you can tap and hold it again, or just let it time itself out. It's really just amazing that these smart controls with a touch sensor allows you to get full functionality out of this kit without the need for soldering. Simply amazing. All right, so those are the primary features of this kit. But now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I think the most impressive thing about this kit is just how easy it is to install. Funny Playing, I feel, has really been focusing on making their mods more accessible to those who may not have the necessary soldering skills to pull off a full installation. Giving the option of not soldering is fantastic, and the inclusion of using touch sensors to navigate the OSD is very thoughtful. And because this screen is paired with a custom shell, trimming is no longer needed, which again is great, and further simplifies the installation process. Now the next pro I want to discuss is the inclusion of the frame blending mode, which really works quite well. IPS kits for the longest time have had the flickering issue, which isn't all too bad, but now that it's fixed, it's just fantastic. Of course, the fact that the IPS panel is laminated to the glass screen lens is another pro. Honestly, having a kit be laminated should now be the standard. Not having to worry about dust or having the perfect alignment is fantastic. Another great thing is that Funny Playing really does give quite a few great color options for not only the IPS kits, but of course their shells and buttons, giving you an endless amount of color combinations to suit your needs. And lastly, when this kit is paired with Funny Playing's rechargeable lithium ion battery, you honestly get the full package. I actually took a closer look at this kit in another video, which I'll have linked in the banner on screen, as well as in the video description below. Anyway, those are the pros, but now let's get into the cons. And really, I couldn't think of many. Funny Playing really did knock it out of the park with this one, and I think it's a fantastic kit. The only potential con I think is price. The screen itself is par for the course and runs at about $60. But you do need to purchase the shell, which is another 15 bucks on top. So all in, you're looking to shell out, no pun intended, a minimum of about 75 bucks before shipping. And if you want to throw in some custom colored buttons and membranes like I did, well, it'll be a few more dollars, so it's not cheap if you want to fully customize the GBA with all these parts. But you certainly do get what you pay for, and I think the Funny Playing range of parts are very good quality. I have to say, it's just amazing to see how far these screen mods have come through the years, 
and it's tough to think how they can be improved further. But Funny Playing has really perfected these screen kits for the Game Boy Advance, and I'm really excited to see what they could possibly do to make them better. Anyway, there you have it. The all new laminated IPS 3.0 kit from Funny Playing. Quite possibly the best LCD kit for the Game Boy Advance. Now I've covered a bunch of these kits on the channel and even have a playlist dedicated to Game Boy Advance mods, which you can check out right here if you're shopping around. So definitely give those videos a look. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.